Welcome to the PLC programming using Twinkia 3 tutorial. This tutorial will give you an introduction to the world of Twinkia 3 software development. The content of this tutorial will be what I consider the most important parts to know about PLC development in general and Twinkia development in particular. There are three reasons why I decided to do this tutorial. The first reason is that there are not that many resources for beginning starting out with Twinkiet. Go into the Beckoff website and browsing their site can be a quite overwhelming at the first. The Beckoff Infosys is great for reference, but it is not course or tutorial material. I get several emails every week from people visiting my blog, alltwinket.com. You have a link in the description below, mostly with technical questions regarding Twinkia 3. Half of these questions are basic ones, which could be covered if there was a basic introduction to Twinkiet. Obviously, there are lots of people hungering for knowledge. The second reason for me writing this tutorial is that I wanted an introduction for software people that might not have done any industrial automation before. My background is software engineering and programming using mostly C and C++. I wanted to write a tutorial that had some references and comparisons with the standard programming languages that you might have learned in school or that you might already have worked with prior to this tutorial. Most of the development practices in Twinket and for the field of automation in general does not have its roots in the field of software engineering, but rather in electrical engineering. PLC software development tools and practices have not had the same development as standard IT software development, and we are currently in a time where a lot of this is changing. I've been at several workplaces where this Twinket 3 thing hasn't been seen as real software engineering. <laughs> And I couldn't disagree more, which I hope, I really, really hope I can prove this partially with this tutorial. I started with PLC programming completely by coincidence, and the scope of this tutorial is it's basically to be the tutorial that I wish I had when I started with PLC software development. The third and final reason is that I find Twinket software development incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fun and fascinating. The more I work with it, the more fascinating I find it. It has given me opportunities to work with everything from manufacturing machines to machines converting wave energy into electricity and with the largest optical telescope in the world. I would simply like to share the wonders of software development in Twinket with others so that hopefully other people can feel the same joy as I have. It's not a requirement to have a software background for this tutorial, but if you have one, it's a bonus. When talking about certain software engineering concepts, I will assume the level of knowledge of the viewer is more of an automation engineer, and I will thus explain them deeper. There are so many things that can be done with the field of Twinket software development that is necessary to limit the scope. There is a lifetime of learning and opportunities in Twinket. If I don't limit the scope, it's more likely that I will just scare any newcomers to this tutorial with all information rather than giving them a good introduction. This tutorial is divided into two main groups. The first group consists of part 2 to 12, which is the basic part, and the scope of this is to give the most important blocks of information for the developer to create useful PLC software. The parts 13 to 17 create the advanced group of this tutorial, which the topics at some point will most likely come across. These parts will not cover the core functionality of Twinket, but rather things that are good to know to have a deeper and more advanced understanding of the Twinket ecosystem. In part 2 I will give some background information to Twinket 3 and describe on a high level how it is working. We will also download the Twinket 3 development environment, the so-called XAE, so that we have everything up and set up for our first program. In this part, we will investigate the real-time properties of Twinket by learning how to define a task and create a program. We will create a typical Hello World program, although not in the classical sense. To have a working program, it's also necessary for us to investigate how licensing works in Twinket 3. A program tutorial is not complete without going through the various data types that are available. IEC 611.31-3, the standard for the programming languages of PLCs which Twinket 3 has implemented, defines several data types that can be used. With structures, you can group variables together into logical groups. 
we are also going to go through functions and some various ways of getting data in and out of functions. The closest thing we will get to the concept of classes in regular programming languages in the PLC programming world are function blocks. In this chapter we will dive into the equivalent building blocks of object-oriented programming languages. In part 7 we will cover if-else, case switches, for and while loops, and some other basic instructions. As Twinket 3 conforms to the IAC 611.31-3 standard, there are certain things it has to be able to do. The TC2 standard library has many of the standard IEC functions, such as timers and triggers, which we will look into in this chapter. In this chapter, we will learn how to use one of the most used Beckhoff libraries for various purposes. We'll add the library to our project and use some of the functions located inside of it. When designing and building a control system, you will eventually want the control system to actuate something, be it a relay, a mixer, a boiler, or maybe a pneumatic system of some sort. To get feedback of the actuation, sensors are needed. In this part, we'll cover how we communicate with the environment using inputs and outputs. Once the complexity of your software gets to a certain level, it might be a good idea to start to think about splitting the software into different libraries. This part will go through how this is accomplished and what you need to think of. When installing the Twinket development environment and runtime, you get access to the core functionality, but sometimes you might want to extend this with additional functionality as for example adding an SQL database connection. In this chapter we'll investigate some Twinket functions that can be added. Version control in the world of automation has historically not been the highest priority, but with Twinket 3 this is entirely possible using standard version control software. In this part we will go through how we can do proper version control using the Git version control system. When developing Twinket software over time, you will most likely end up in a position where you must be able to develop and maintain software for various versions of Twinket. This chapter will go through how this is done. ADS, the Automation Device Specification, is Beckhoff's middleware to communicate with Beckhoff PLCs. It's used for all kinds of use cases, as software deployment, reading and writing of variables, and for internal communication of software modules. In this part, we'll go through the theory and also write some C-sharp software to communicate with the PLC. I'll also do a simple C++ program running under Linux that talks to the PLC. With the Twinket automation interface, it's possible to automate certain parts of the configuration, development, and deployment process of your PLC software. In this chapter, we will look into the possibilities with the Twinket automation interface and look at one example. Test-driven development, TDD, has been around in the field of software engineering for quite some time. The world of automation has been lacking behind, but Nowadays, it's entirely possible to do unit testing with Twinket using the TC unit unit testing framework. This chapter will show how to do TDD with Twinket. A tutorial is not complete without a few final words to wrap up what we have learned and where to go from now. There are many other topics that can be covered uh, in a Twinket 3 tutorial. A few of them are, for instance, motion control for when you want to control motors. HMI, human machine interface, for when you want to do a fancy front end for your application. Vision, for when to do, use a camera to do, for example, quality inspection. Measurement, when you want to measure and analyze your process. These are, however, huge, huge topics in their own manner, and each and one of them could easily be a multi-part tutorial. Beckhoff has this complete ecosystem of industrial automation that you can probably spend a lifetime investigating in detail if you would like to. To start this tutorial, our starting point will be the IAC 611.31-3 standard, which is a standard concerning the software architecture and programming languages of PLCs. In this IAC standard, there are five programming languages defined. First one is sequential function charts. Next, we have ladder diagram. Then we have function block diagram. Next is instruction list. And finally is structured text. The three first languages that I mentioned have their origins more from the field of electrical engineering rather than software engineering. 
as they were invented to replace the relay circuitry and logic that was used prior to the invention of the PLC. Instruction list is a low-level language that works in the same way as assembler for the people that are watching this tutorial that have experience with, with this programming language. This tutorial will only cover the high-level language structure text, as this is the language that is most similar to other programming languages that you might already have experience with. I want to end this part by saying that I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, but whenever I see it fit, I will also mention the limitations and drawbacks with Twinket and PLC programming in general. And for you viewers that have a software background, many of these drawbacks will be very obvious. With that said, let's get started.